HQ Spotlight is back, and so is Danny Cannell, and he's got his quarterback tiers for this NFL season. And you're not just going like elite, good, mid, bad. I mean, no. you, you've got a, a, a multi, multi tiered system. Let's take a look, and we'll start at the very top with the most valuable. Sometimes Mahomes gets his own tier. Not on your tiers list. No, not now. And by the way, we went to the creative department to come up with these names. Like, there was a lot of research <laughs> done on these. Creative the department most valuable, up in Danny's head. So, like, Mahomes, no doubt. Uh -huh. Burrow, no doubt. Lamar Jackson's got two of them, so no doubt about him. C.J. Stroud is the one that pops out probably to some mm -hmm. people, but I do think he's MVP caliber. And if he backs up what he did last year in Houston where he had this phenomenal uh, rookie season that kind of came out of nowhere, I think he's absolutely MVP conversation. And don't forget the move with Stephon Diggs to give him another weapon to go along with Tank Dell and Nico Collins. If he keeps his composure the way he did last season, I think the sky is the limit. Texans could win the division. I think they, they've already got a playoff win under their belt. I think C.J. Stroud is absolutely in that mix for the MVP. So that's the top tier. Right below that, you got Stroud ahead of Josh Allen, who's on the primetime players tier. And I'm surprised to see you going here. Josh Purdy in there That as was well. the one. Or, excuse gonna, me, Brock Purdy. Yeah, that's the one that's going to jump out to a lot of people. It's time we give him his due, right? I mean, the uh, guy has gotten two years now of going out there and proving to every critic that he's no longer Mr. Irrelevant, that he can win the big games, that he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. So I think Brock Purdy, for me, I was a big doubter. Finally, I'm going to give him the credit that he's due and put him along with those uh, couple star and stars. And we'll explain. I know you're seeing at the bottom busts. It's not exactly what you think. Yeah, we'll get to patient. that in just a second. Next one is the Mo Money, yes. Mo Problems. And these are a lot of guys that they got paid a lot of money that haven't necessarily won yet. Yes, that's the common theme in this tier is they've all got these new deals that are all in the top, you know, 50 plus million dollar range. And along with that, more money becomes the expectation rises. So your own fan base who might have been a darling like a Jordan Love, who was, you know, the heir apparent to Aaron Rodgers. Fans loved him. He's got this new deal. The thing that concerns me about him and where I think he needs to prove that he belongs in this tier and even possibly to move up into it. You really only saw 10 games last season of him playing at this elite level. We know how hard it is to sustain, sustain success in the NFL. Can he do it again? Can he back it up? CJ Stroud has to prove that as well. But to me, Jordan Love didn't quite have the same body of work. I need to see him do it over the course of the season. But it's not going to affect his bank account either way. Yeah, in a really tough division as well. Uh, next tier is same, same, but different. And yes. I know Dak Prescott, their number four, would love yep. to be in this column, but he's not quite and, yet. And he might before the season's over. But I look at these three quarterbacks, Derek Carr, Kirk Cousins, and Dak Prescott, almost as interchangeable. They've all had a lot of regular season success. They've had incredible careers. They put up big stats but they don't have anything to show for it in the postseason. I think it's a big season for all of them to try to break those, you know, kind of narratives about them so they can get out of this category where you can't tell them apart. It's better than the category below that last chance you. And yeah. even Deshaun Watson has showed up there. Yes, I mean, I think it's time. We've even been talking about did a segment with Pete Prisco the other day about Deshaun Watson. He's hurt but again. He's hurt again, and this is the contract. We were talking about more money, more problems. He's the one that set the bar for all these guys when he came in from Houston. It was given this big guaranteed contract it has not translated yet I was a big believer in Deshaun Watson early in his career it is time to put up or shut up for Deshaun Watson how about Daniel Jones the team that drafted you the New York Giants they paid him not too long ago and already fans are out on this guy yeah and it's this is going to be a really hard year he has to overcome the criticism that he's taken and really to me for Daniel Jones the reason it is his last opportunity there's no more excuses because all I've heard, and a lot of Giants fans and a lot of people that are critics of Daniel Jones have heard excuses. You haven't had an offensive line. You've been hurt. Saquon Barkley was hurt. And I know he doesn't have Saquon Barkley, but they specifically went out and made the Malik Neighbors uh, draft pick specifically to give Daniel Jones an opportunity to showcase what he can do. They bolstered up the offensive line. This is clearly, probably more so than anybody, the make or break year for Daniel Jones, where they're going to know he's either playing for the Giants next year or they are moving on. This looks like a very unique tiered system because you've got fountain of youth with Aaron Rodgers and Matthew Stafford way down here. I feel like this should like 
like go up here more. It don't could. You think? It's a little bit random. There's a little bit of randomness to there. Like doesn't mean these guys are better than okay. these. Clearly, with the careers they've yeah. had, these guys are searching for the fountain of youth. I know there's one up in St. Augustine that they thought they found <laughs> hundreds of years ago, but they're looking for it. You've got all these quarterback over the age of 36. They're trying to rekindle some of that magic. Stafford just a few years ago was in a Super Bowl, got that trophy. Aaron, it's been a long time, and he's coming off that Achilles. And Russell Wilson is the guy for me that really is searching for it probably the most because I thought he was going to be have you know a nice fresh opportunity in Denver. It didn't work out at all. Now he goes to Pittsburgh, where I do think he gets a much more stable franchise. Clearly where they've had more success and been a playoff team perennially. But I also think the system will fit him better. A little bit more of a run game, a strong defense. Kind of reminds me of what he had in Seattle early in his career when he had the most success. He just needs to check his ego at the door, start executing that offense. And I don't put much in stock into the preseason with any of these players. I'm looking at guys when the regular season starts. I think Russell Wilson will bump it up a notch. And now to the real question. I think a lot of people, are, are, their eyes have been down here the whole time. All these guys are busts? What? Bus. Caleb what? Williams already a bust? So this one, it's busts. But is it going to be a bust in Canton, in oh, the Hall of Fame? Okay. Or are you going to be mentioned with the bust of, of NFL lore? Uh -huh. um, so, this, But th these are young quarterbacks where we don't really know yet. But odds are 50-50, they're either going to be Hall of Famers or they're going to be bust that we, do, that we just don't know. So there's all about potential. Caleb Williams has shown it so far. He's been pretty special. Uh, why, why are you going to go to Bo Nix? Bo Nix? just saying. Maybe that's why the bust name was created. Uh -huh. All right. I just want everybody to slow your roll on Bo Nix, okay? I know he's had <laughs> yeah, a you've great preseason. Yeah, you've been saying that for a year. I, hey, watch it. He's looked great in the preseason, and Sean Payton's already dunking on everybody, saying this was the pick of the draft. Let's just remember their win total is five and a half. It is going to be bumpy. I know he's looked perfect in the preseason, but there will be ups and downs. That, to me, is what's going to separate Bo Nix. Can he, can he withstand the criticism that he's going to take? I know it's been all great now, but the roster is not that great. The receiving core doesn't really have a, you know, a true alpha on the outside for him just to go to. I think they're going to struggle to run the football. I think it's going to be a long year for Bo Nix. I don't even know if we know the answer to this after the season, but I think he's going to be probably one of the more polarizing rookies that we talk about because of the, the draft pick, where it was, because of the hype coming into the mm -hmm. season, and where it ends up. I'm going to go ahead and step out of frame so that you can take a still shot of Danny with that tears list right there and <laughs> post that on social media.